I came home, I threw away all my Ambien, I got off of all sleep medications, which I do take responsibility for that. If you are somebody that for three years is dependent on Ambien, that's not healthy. It's not healthy. So I guess this for me was a wake up call to just get off of all meds. And that's what it has done for me. So like I said, my life has gotten a lot better since this happened because I have, I, like I said, I've grown. I've just grown tremendously. I go to church now. I've got a better relationship with God. I mean, everything has improved in my life. So I don't, I don't um, have any regrets that this happened to me. Sean, Holly, I, the best thing I ever did was retain her. She was really honest. She was forthcoming. She's got a good relationship with the DA and really, really tried to get the DA to see that this is a legitimate me taking one Ambien and having this entire unconscious life that occurred for hours where I woke up in the hospital with no recollection except a sheriff standing by me. I mean, I don't remember anything. And even going over the police report, I was shocked. I, I didn't recall any of it, and I still don't. I got to tell you, as I was sitting in my jail cell, I said a prayer, and I said, thank you, God, that I wasn't a black, young black man, because they would have shot me, and that's my opinion. She was very aggressive. She could tell I was out of it. I was not really lucid. I wasn't able to communicate with her much. And she, I just am, that's how I feel, because I feel that's the climate of how the police is dealing with things around the country. So I was feeling blessed that that was not my situation because I truly think it would have been elevated. I hope that doesn't sound wonky or weird, but that was the thought as I was sitting in jail, really, that I was just extremely lucky.